come in the name of Jesus. Let's stand before you. It's good to see all of you this evening. The book of Psalms 73. If you're writing notes, write boldly. Don't jump sheep. Ever been one sheep and you think it's sinking and you want to jump to the other one? <laughs> Ever seen green pastures and you get there and only to discover that it's a sewage? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you and we always like where it's greener. They always say the grass is green on the other side. Only to get there, you realize it's fake grass. I'm going to address issues that Christians go through. These are very real issues that we all face. There are times when we feel that we are not in the right place and we just want to go somewhere else. There are times when we feel that maybe God is telling me to go somewhere else, but how do you know how to move? How do you know who to leave? Sometimes it's even with people. Sometimes it's even with churches. <laughs> Amen. I've never felt that, oh, I'm in the wrong church. I felt that. <laughs> it's like, ah, don't think wrong, <laughs> There are times when you feel that your neighbor and your classmates are doing much more than you. Your age mates are going somewhere. There are times when you feel that your peers are piercing through more than what you are doing. But I'm going to bless you tonight. Oh, yes. I want you to understand that God is directing your steps. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yes. That means you have nothing to do with your next step. Yes. You might not know what step you're taking, you might not understand it, but let me tell you that scripture is very real. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I like the scripture, David goes through certain things where he starts looking around, he sees his neighbors building, he sees them getting new cars. Can I be relevant to you? Yes. He sees them experiencing things, he sees the girl who was in class who was ugly that everybody loved at getting married. He sees the other ones having kids and they're struggling to have kids. He sees a whole lot of things happening around him that he thought probably that's where he'll be, but he's not getting there. He gets into his quiet place and he writes in his diary, takes his pen and he says, sorry, this is not David, this is Asafa, okay? One of the musicians those days who was the leader of David's praise and worship. Understand David as king, he put people in place. Asafa was one of the leaders who was a musician and he would write songs. Can we start having songs from Zamaya? Yeah? Can we start having some Asafaric? And the thing with some of us Christians, some of you musicians, you want to write a perfect song for God. You want to write the perfect anthem that praises God and you forget your humanity. You forget you're human also, and you forget that you are allowed to sing about how weak you are. Amen. You are forgetting sometimes, and that song, How Weak You Are, can actually become a hit song. Because you want to write about the Lion of Judah. <laughs> and you forget that you can simply write about God today and mess up. I'm as weak as the next door neighbor who is hellish and doesn't know you. And Father, I am nobody. And that song can hit the charts because most of the people he's singing to are exactly like you. 
That's why that the time I took up to Facebook and some of our social media platforms. And I just had to tell people to say, you know what? We all stand before the presence of God and no one is perfect. And it takes a lot for you just to simply acknowledge your weaknesses. And in so doing, you are telling people that it's not, it's not about me at the end of the day. It's really about God. It is He who calls us out of darkness into light. And the moment you acknowledge those type of weaknesses, God is glorified. Because He says, even God says that, I glory in your weaknesses. For when you are weak, then you are strong. But you think when you are strong, then you are strong. Sometimes you just have to take up your pen. And you write, truly God is good to Israel. To such as are pure in heart. God is good to those people. But as for me, <laughs> my feet had almost stumbled. I, my steps had nearly slipped. I was dead. This used to be one of my best scriptures. I used to meditate upon this when I felt like I was a nobody and I just thought like, God, hey. and God kept on telling me, I need you and I love you. And I'm like, you love me. <laughs> Did you see the other guy who prays a lot? You better love him. And God told me to meditate on this. There was a time when I felt like my life wasn't moving. It wasn't going anywhere and I was going to be a nobody. God told me this. So I meditated on this scripture day in and day out. He says, for I was envious. He says, I nearly slipped. I nearly was taken by the wind. How? For I was envious of the boastful. Mm. You are seeing these people with their G63s and the people who were proud. He says, I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. How they were mm up. He says, I won't lie to you, I wasn't praying, I was watching. He says, I won't lie to you, I wasn't sticking to scripture saying God is good. I was watching the wicked and I could tell, mm, these guys. <laughs> For there are no pains in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace, violent covers them like a garment. Their eyes bow to the abundance. Have you seen them eating and those eating food eatery places at lunch? <laughs> the guy is full and he's <laughs> They have more than heart could wish. Look at their Insta. They have 10 cars that are written Bauchi 1, Bauchi 2, Bauchi 4, and you don't even have any 1. <laughs> Start with 0, minus 0, then 0, then 1. The bank is still telling you, you don't even qualify for a mortgage. <laughs> Can we be as real as it gets? He is not saying, God, you are good, you are my Lord. He's saying, hey, I have been watching the weekend. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lofty. Let's keep on going, Baba. Move with me. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. They can talk about anyone. Therefore, his people return here, and waters are a full cup, of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Does he know? Is there God? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. For all day long I have been plucked and chastened every morning. This is me now. If I had said I would speak like this, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. He said, if I had said, let me just talk about hallelujah, how God is. He says, I was going to be untrue to you. He says, I had to say it exactly the way it is. I'm in pain in my heart when I look at them. 
When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. How come they are evil, arrogant, and they seem to be going further and further? While you are still looking at the latest car on YouTube, you hear them driving it in the road. <laughs> Go to verse 16. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. I love Asafa. He then said, All this was happening when I was out in the world observing people. Up until on a Tuesday night, I decided to go by the same process. sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Mm. You surely set them on slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakes, so Lord you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant, I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me to glory. Amen. Whom have I in heaven but you? Amen. And there is no one upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart, they are weak, they fail. Someone say, my flesh and my heart. My flesh and my heart. Ever felt that your body falling, failing you? Yes. Your heart failing you? But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Give me praise, somebody. Give me praise. So he's talking about this and he's saying, I was observing the wicked people. How they boastful, how they have everything. How they don't have sorrows and pains. How their life seems like it's going always up and down. Every time it's going up. He says, but for me, I had lost heart. I had nearly slipped by observing that, by focusing on that. He says, that only changed the moment I got into the house of God. When I got into the house of God, I started understanding how these people are going to fall suddenly. You start now to remember the tender boys who just then fell suddenly. You start coming across people that two years ago were the eat and now they are no longer the eat. They are no longer eating. <laughs> you start seeing every person that was called the big person and now you look at them and say, how, how, what, what happened? Like, Don't take for granted what God can do in your life. Because you think sometimes God will come and take you out of debt and yet God sometimes does not decide to take you out of debt. He simply decides to strengthen your heart in debt. Yeah. How is it that another person can go through the very same problem that you are facing right now and they lose their mind but you've been on it for the last two years still chilled, still at peace, still smiling. Amen. So Asafa is saying don't lose direction don't lose focus the people that you see if they don't have God they are endless destruction and it's going to come in a moment it's going to happen when you least expect it so he starts looking and telling people that you have to be very careful where your focus is you can easily be tempted to look at other things and say I wish I was that he says, I nearly slipped. He starts telling us that, because he's writing and saying, I had to write this for the sake of the generations to come. Because it does happen that your heart can get carried away and you start admiring other people and you think you are a nobody. 
I've come to tell somebody you are a somebody. And with the God of heaven, your God, your life is going somewhere. 